Drift missiles really are um, a purpose-built practice car for tandem drifting. They're not necessarily a starter drift car. They're definitely not a competition car. They're not pretty, um, usually, unless you're just an insane baller and you want to destroy a beautiful car that you spend a bunch of time and money on. Generally, uh, in the past, they've been unsafe vehicles, um, but really, a drift missile is a purpose-built car for tandem drifting. It would be something that you and people you like to practice with all own. Um, it'd be a cheaper chassis, something that's um, pretty old. So, I mean, Nissan 240 is a perfect example of, a, of what could be a Nissan, or could be a drift missile. I've seen a lot of old laurels, um, some old skylines, depending on where you're at. I really highly recommend, I know a lot of people think drift missiles don't need roll cages for whatever reason, but keep in mind, this is the car where you're trying new stuff. You're trying to learn uh, new things and you're trying to get closer than you've ever been before to the wall, to the other driver, all these things. So you really want this to be safe. So bare minimum, you need a six point roll cage in it with door bars. You need a fire extinguisher. You need a good seat and a good harness, all right? Absolutely bare minimums. Once those get banged up, which they will, um, build a real bash bar for them. Don't keep running that stock crash bar. Um, after that crash bar has been blown into, they're meant for one impact and one impact only. Um, they're not meant to be reused. Um, cool thing is with drift missiles, you don't care about the body kit, you don't care about the paint. So gut those windows out, gut the interior out, make it as light as possible. Keep simple parts on it. Um, I think for drift missiles that you're looking to ever upgrade. It's really something that you buy that is probably already kind of beat up. Don't get something that's been in like a crazy crash because um, that's just gonna, you're starting out with something unsafe. They're great for tandeming because when you are learning it to tandem, even when you're trying to excel at tandem, when you're a great tandem driver, maybe even a pro driver, they still have a serious use because you're continually trying to get closer and continually trying to drive, have that wall slide even longer on the wall and be closer to that front driver. Mistakes happen. Um, humans aren't perfect, the cars aren't perfect. Things happen, um, you bump, you spin, you're getting little minor crashes. So these cars are great for that. Interesting thing about drift missiles is a lot of people see them out of Bisu. They see the crazy like intercooler piping come out of the hood with no intercooler on them. Um, the rear end completely smashed in. Those cars are actually outlawed out of Bisu circuit now. And I think a lot of the other drift circuits are following suit. Those cars are just completely unsafe. The guys weren't running roll cages in them. I was actually around, I was in a Bisu the year um, that one of the really gnarly crashes happened that um, caused this whole, this whole change, if you guys weren't aware of what the change is. So they used to really not care. You could pretty much drive anything as long as it ran. Um, but after somebody rolled their car over and ended up getting paralyzed um, because of having no roll cage in it, um, they're like, this is just absurd. Uh, people are driving them faster. They're getting a little more power out of them. Find yourself something that is just old as hell and beat up, not totaled. Put a roll cage in it and make yourself a drift missile. Um, there's a lot of guys that are sticklers about using the drift missile term saying, you know, if you don't already have a competition car, you know, classify your car as a drift missile because it's really just your main drift car. I don't really care about all that. Um, I don't think you guys should either. I think if you make a safe drift missile, that's like the ultimate starter drift car. Cause you're gonna get, you're gonna bang it up, learn to drift. And when you go forward, don't try to convert that car into your, you know, your your nice car, build another car as your nice car, but I would keep that car because it's going to be great for when you are trying to still advance your skills and try stuff out. Um, it's It sucks to try like a new technique um, or try a wall ride you haven't done before um, or get close with a you know one of your friends in a car that you spent a bunch of time and money on making beautiful. So these drift missiles are going to be a great alternative for that. So when you're building a drift missile, it's, it's not about putting a buttload of power in it or a crazy angle kit. I would try to find something that already is is turbocharged and has decent horsepower from the factory and honestly that's going to be enough and skid pads where you're really just practicing close tandem you know hitting certain clipping points things like that so anywhere from you know 150 to 300 horsepower is going to be uh, more than fine you can go a little further i know a lot of guys will take drift missiles and um, like the jzx is such a great drift missile um, they're not a lot of them aren't legal in the U.S. yet, but as they get there, we'll see a lot of more of those being used. Because they come with the 2JZ, um, it's super easy to just do an ECU upgrade on them or even a little larger turbo. Maybe get 400 horsepower out of it and get a little bit more serious uh, practice car. Really, drift missiles, just look at making them safe, look at making them reliable, and then just beat the hell out of them. That's what they're built for. 
and you don't have to worry about scratching your buddy's door because um, you're both running drift missiles. Now, one thing I will say is if you have a drift missile, please don't tandem with guys with beautiful cars without asking them because they don't want you to bang your car, <laughs> to bang their car. You don't care and that's awesome, um, but a lot of them do. So um, talk to guys before you drive with them at the track. You know, make sure they're cool with you chasing them and you know, maybe staying back a little bit and not trying to rub that door. But the best scenario possible is you and a couple buddies all have drift missiles and you can just shred together. It's the best practice you're ever gonna get because you're not worried about banging up your nice car. Um, you feel safe because you do have a roll cage in it and it, you can really get close and practice those tandem skills. So depending on the chassis uh, that you choose, um, you're gonna be looking anywhere from 1500 to like seven grand for a drift missile. Seven grand is gonna, that's kind of expensive for a drift missile, um, but really I would set aside, you know, let's say five grand to build a safe, reliable drift missile. So that's gonna get you the chassis, get you a running car. Um, don't get something that's not running where you need to put a bunch of money and work into, it's not worth it. Um, with drift missiles, one thing to keep in mind is I would look at them as kind of recyclable chassis. It's gonna get destroyed, it's, it's gonna get totaled at some point, or it's just gonna get so banged up where it's beyond use. So what you're gonna do at that point is you're gonna take the salvageable parts, cage it, and put those parts over. That's what's really cool about these, these drift missiles. And so, you know, look at not investing a buttload of money in that. Generally, when we buy cars, we're looking at them as more of an investment, whereas drift missiles, the chassis is kind of like the angle kit or the tires or anything like that. It's, it's more of a consumable at this point. So I'd say if you're like still wondering what the heck, what, what kind of drift missile should I get? So some of my top choices would be a Nissan 240, obviously. Um, you can find like a S13 hatch that's running for super, super cheap. Um, it's already lightweight, has decent power. Uh, manual transmission, rear wheel drive. There's great cheaper angle kits built for them. Um, so that's gonna be probably my top choice, quite honestly. Some of the older BMWs are great drift missiles as well. Um, those have a little bit more horsepower. They're lightweight, uh, good cheap parts built for them. JZX, JZX 90s are another great one. Those are becoming more legal. Thing is with those, a lot of the guys, a lot of the cars that people are importing, they're importing really high quality cars. Um, so you can hit them up and look for a little cheaper car or maybe find one that's already in the United States or in Canada or something like that. I think even Nissan Skylines I would put on there. Uh, those do come with the, the Skyline tax, uh, but they're out there, they're available. We were actually just looking, we really, really want to build like two Skyline missiles, um, but you can find those for summer in that three to four or five grand range. Because those may come with a little bit more power being inline six and turbo over like an inline four like you'd find in the 240. Um, a good thing to think about is you'll, you'll have to spend a little bit more money on some of the performance for the 240 and a little bit less on the Skyline. So it, it may balance out there. Um, I'm not a big fan of that. Like I, I love driving super hard. I, I would say that's like probably my biggest thing is driving as hard as I can. But I'm not going out there trying to destroy my car. So I think that's something that uh, to keep in mind, like these aren't cars that you're just buying to destroy. Drift missiles really are just purpose-built tandem practice cars. With Abisu, uh, as I mentioned earlier, outlawing true missile cars, I think that was a great move. Uh, I think it kind of puts a little bit more pressure to people for people to make their cars a little safer. Please don't go out buying something where the rear end is completely smashed in. With the drift missile, you're trying stuff that you haven't done before. Um, so you'd actually be better off using that car as a competition car, because you're maybe driving just like with a little bit more, you know, with your head in it a little bit more. With the drift missile, make it a little bit safe, okay? It's important. We don't want to uh, die doing this sport. So I know drift missiles, uh, People tend to kind of argue about them a lot. So if you guys didn't agree with some of the stuff we said, uh, feel free to comment and let us know. These are, again, just our opinions on the drift missile. Uh, there's many opinions out there. Thank you for watching. Please hit that subscribe button. We really appreciate it, guys. Uh, we're doing three uploads a week. So stay tuned. We'll see you guys in probably a day or two. See you guys later.